In football, there's nothing that truly captures a moment like a photo. Photos can show joy. They can show despair. They can be used for memes. That's <laughs> sensational. That's absolutely... But there's one football photo that, to me, stands out from the rest. And that's this one. It's a brilliant photo. And if you're a football fan, you've probably seen this photo. But you may not know the story behind it. And that's what I'm here to explain today. This is the story behind the picture taken during a Heater Milan derby. The most iconic picture in football history. But before we get into that, I'm starting a podcast. Yeah, that's right, me and Tin N, you should go subscribe to it, by the way, are starting a podcast called Snake Sport, and on it we will cover all types of sport. Football, we'll cover it. American sports, we'll cover it. Australian sports, we'll cover it. Your nan's local lawnmowers tournament, yeah, we'll cover it. Okay, we won't really, but we'll cover everything else, so why wouldn't you go sub? We're going to try to do weekly episodes, and the first episode should be out sometime this week, so go check it out. Can't wait to see you there. Anyway, back into the video. Our original photo was taken in 2005, but let me run you through the history of the Milan derby first. I'll be quick, I promise. AC Milan was formed in 1899 by Herbert Kiplan, then nine years later in 1908, AC Milan representatives had disagreements over whether the club should sign foreign players. The disagreement was never settled, and in the end, those in favour of signing foreign players left AC Milan to create their own club, Internazionale, or Inter Milan. This one disagreement would set up a fierce local rivalry for the next century. The first ever meeting between the two sides on the 10th of January 1909, which saw Milan win 3-2. And ever since this meeting, the two clubs have played each other over 300 times. They also share the same stadium, the San Siro, which just makes derbies even more special as there's never really a home side. Anyway, over to one of these meetings in 2005, where this iconic photo was snapped. But how do we even get to this point? This photo wasn't actually taken during a Serie A game. It was during a Champions League game in the second leg of a quarterfinals matchup. AC Milan qualified for the Champions League in simple fashion, winning the league by 11 points ahead of second place Roma. For Inter, it was tighter. They were part of a thrilling top four race, which also featured Parma and Lazio. However, Inter booked their spot for the qualifying rounds of the UCL with a thrilling 3-2 win over Empoli, putting them one point clear of Parma and three point clear of Lazio. The next season in their qualifying round, Inter played swiss size Basel, and after winning 4-1 at home and 5-2 in aggregate, it became official. Both Milan teams would feature in the 2004-05 Champions League. On to the group stages. Milan were handed a group with Barcelona, Shakhtar Donetsk, and Celtic, while into it in a group with Werder Bremen, Valencia, and Anderlecht. And in the end, both teams will qualify for the knockouts comfortably. Milan lost away at the Camp Nou, but went the other five games unbeaten with four wins and a draw. This was enough to get them first place with 13 points. Meanwhile, to deal with the Sir Alex Ferguson Man United side that featured players like Ronaldo, Keane, Rooney, Giggs, Scholes, Neville, and Ferdinand. Into were also given a tough matchup, during Porto, who had won the UCL the year prior. But both teams ended up winning. Milan first travelled to Old Trafford, and a Hurd and Crespo goal in the 78th minute gave them a 1 0 lead after the first leg. Then, during the second leg of the San Siro, Hurd and Crespo once again scored in a 1 0 win, giving Milan a 2 0 win on aggregate. As for Inter, they drew 1 0 against Porto in the first leg away from home. However, in the second leg at the San Siro, an Adriano hat trick saw Inter grab a 3 1 win, and 4 2 on aggregate. Then came the quarterfinals, and as luck would have it, the two sides were drawn against each other. So now we're getting closer to that famous image, but we're not quite there yet. And before we move on, I want to take a brief moment to talk about the two players in the shot, Rui Costa and Marco Materazzi. First off, Costa. Born in Portugal, Costa was 33 at the time of this story, but was still contributing. Sure, he wasn't the best player on that Milan team, but he did still play a role. Costa was an attack midfielder who was blessed with that Brazilian flair despite not being Brazilian. Costa spent his career playing for Benfica, Fafé, Fiorentina, and AC Milan, and he also played 94 times for Portugal. Then there was Marco Materazzi, who to put it simply, was a psychopath. I mean, all the great teams had one, right? Man United had Roy Keane, AC Milan had Gennaro Gattuso, and Inter Milan had Marco Materazzi. Born in Italy, Materazzi briefly played in England and India during his career, but spent most of his time playing for a number of teams in Italy. The centre-back was never one to shy away from a challenge, known for being a feisty player who would always end up in fights. He was a key member of Inter's team that season, playing in six of Inter's eight UCL games up to that point, and even captaining the team versus Anderlecht. However, in the first leg against Milan, he was on the bench, and so was Rui Costa. But Milan weren't going to miss Costa because, I mean, just look at that team. But while AC Milan got to play their full strength team, Inter didn't. They were missing Adriano, who had just scored a hat-trick in their most recent UCL game through injury. But despite this, Inter were on top of Milan early on. However, they were clearly missing Adriano because they just couldn't finish. And when you don't take your chances, Milan are going to punish you. Late in the first half, Milan won a free kick. Andre Pirlo whipped it in and sent it back to Starm finished it. 1-0 AC Milan. In the second half, Inter kept up the attacks but once again could not convert. And when Pirlo got another free kick in the 74th minute, he once again found a teammate's head, this time assisting Andrei Shevchenko. And that would be enough to see it a 2-0 win for Milan in the first leg. Over to the second leg, where Adriano was indeed back. 
Michael Materazzi was also back in the starting lineup, along with Andy Van Der Maide and Kili Gonzalez. Once again, Inter had chances but just could not score. And half an hour into the match, when Shevchenko found the net with a long range strike, the tie was seemingly put to bed. But let's take it to the 70th minute. Inter won a corner, and Esteban Cabiaso headed it home. Unfortunately, it was called off due to Julio Cruz fouling Dita. Now, how did the Inter fans react? The Inter fans threw flares on the pitch. Not just one or two, but a lot. And how did they get that many flares into the stadium? I don't know. Here's where things get serious. After a few flares hit the grass, one hits Milan's keeper Dita on the neck. Suddenly the situation gets serious. Dita falls to his knees and immediately gets medical treatment. Meanwhile, Inter players plead with their fans to stop throwing flares, but they don't. And as players helplessly watched along from the halfway line, Marco Materazzi put his arm around Rui Costa's shoulder as both players watched on at the scene unfolded, creating one of the most iconic pictures of all time. Now, initially referee Marcus Merck didn't call the game off. Milan sub Dita off for Christian Aviardi and Merck retired the game. Bold call Marcus. Let's see how it pans out. Okay, now the game's over. The match was abandoned in the 73rd minute and declared as a 3 0 Milan win, which saw the Rossoneri advance to the semi finals with a 5 0 win. They beat PSV on away goals in the semi final and then took a 3 0 lead over Liverpool in the final. Unfortunately for Milan, Liverpool won on penalties, completing one of the best comebacks of all time. As for Inter, they were eliminated from the 04 05 Champions League. They were also punished for the incident, being fined around 300,000 euros, as well as being forced to play the next four home matches in Europe behind closed doors. Over the next few years, Inter saw a wide range of success. They went on to win five Serie A titles between 2006 and 2010. Milan did win a Champions League in 2007 during this time, but Inter also got their hands on a UCL title as well in 2010. And then both Milan teams kind of declined. As we know, Juventus went on to rip the Serie A to shreds in the 2010s, and both Milan teams kind of seemed like sleeping giants for a while. But now the Milan Derby is back and better than ever. Inter stopped Juventus from winning 10 titles in a row in the 2021 season. Milan then won the league the next year in 2022. And now this year, in 2023, we're going to see the two teams match up in the UCL semi-finals. This will be their first matchup in the UCL since the famous matchup in 2005, and it's going to be must-watch TV. But that is going to end today's video guys, and I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, and sub, and I'll see you next time.